In the previous khutbah, we spoke about the importance of religious gatherings. We spoke about the importance and we spoke that it is one of the difficult things to do because we don't see any material benefit in it. And other thing we spoke about that how shaitan put us in a thinking trap that I know everything. And even if I don't know something, I don't really have to go attend, attend any of the religious classes or gatherings because it can be seen later on on YouTube or on, the, on other social media platforms. However, what we saw was that when person comes to the masjid or attended or attends any other religious gathering where people are talking about Allah, His Quran, His Prophet, they're just talking about the deen, what are the blessings are for those people? And then we spoke about the best zikr, which is Quran. So today we'll speak about the other part where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَعْدُعَيْنَا كَعَنْهُمْ And don't let your eyes pass beyond them. Them, the people who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. تُرِيدُ زِينَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا So it is something like if somebody do not attend the religious gatherings, if somebody thinks that I know everything, usually... Shaitan puts, up, puts us under the trap, I'm still young, I'm still in high school, oh, I still have to go to high school, or I'm still 15, 17, especially this is the age where Shaitan really, really attacks the person and makes the person think, wow, well, you're a superman, or maybe Iron Man or Spider Man, whatever man, you know, like, Shaitan puts this trap in the mind of that child, and of course, there are a lot of superheroes movies available, and this is what that person thinks. And I'm just saying the age, but normally if you see a person who is in his youth, is in, uh, alhamdulillah, he is fine uh, from his health perspective, from his time perspective. That person thinks that, you know what, this is the world I need. I should put all my efforts in now to this world. So later on, I can live peacefully and I can earn a lot of money. This is a general trap of the shaitan. And of course, this is how we all, most of the people, this is how we think. I'm going to speak about it. But over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us through him that people who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, don't your eyes pass beyond them. Don't let your eyes pass beyond them to read the zinat al-hayat al-dunya. Desiring adornments of this world. In other words, out of the desire for the attractions of this worldly life. See, what is very important. How many of us try to think in this way when they wake up in the morning that this might be my last day? Very few. Well, I have very few. Right now, if I start from myself, that how many times previous day, which has passed, when I woke up in the morning, I thought that this is going to be my last day. I may not be able to see the end of this day. Or how many people from us go to sleep thinking, I may not wake up again. We heard this, right? We heard this every other day that some gentleman or lady was sleeping and then they never woke up. Do we ever think this way? So now, when the importance of this life and hereafter comes in, then how much of this time, what we have available, which we put for dunya, which is natural, how many of this time we try to put in for the sake of the deen, for the sake of Islam, for the sake of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, purely and purely, Seeking his pleasure. Wallahi, how many of us can put their hand on their heart and say, I do that. Okay, maybe me, you know, white beard, you know, health is not good. <coughs> I'm thinking maybe I have two, three, five years to live. So maybe I'll put a little more time. But especially those people who are young, especially those people who do not have any health issues, especially those people who are striving for their best or successful career, how many of those people try to put this thinking into every day's life they live, every moment they're living, that I may not have the next day to do something good or to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Muslimin, 
when a person takes his eyes away from his hereafter, when a person forgets the purpose of his life, when the person forgets that this dunya, this life, this world is temporary, then what happens? Then of course the priorities changes. The very effect, the very first effect of this behavior is the person start seeking the pleasure of the people who he thinks are of higher status. The person starts putting his efforts for those things which he thinks is going to make him successful in this dunya. And you know what is the next best trap of the shaitan? He goes like, see, you see, around, around the world, look at Muslims. They're all Muslims, right? What are they going through? No. They are like carrots and vegetables being cut around the world. Nobody cares for them. This is what is your value as a Muslim. And you want to become even more religious? Even more religious, whereas you look at the Western world. Beautiful roads, beautiful country. Oh, tall buildings, this system, that system. And then on top of that, when you look at some of the videos available on, available, you know, on social media, and there are people sitting there and you know, they're abusing and, and, and they're saying all those negative, negative things about Islam and Muslims. And I'm not going into that right now. There are, always, there are always answers to that, of course. But the point is that how many of us manage not to get into this trap of the shaitan. And how many of us really at this age, especially when you are in high school or when you have passed high school, when you are around there, how many of us really believe that I am proud to be who I am? I am not ashamed of my identity. I am a Muslim and I choose to be a Muslim, not because I'm born as a Muslim. And if you are born as a Muslim, that might be, a, a, might, that might be an ad advantage. But just being born as a Muslim does not guarantee anything. Unless you choose to be who you are. Unless we live our life according to the preferences which are set by Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How many of us think that way? So, Qur'an Muslimin, when person goes into that trance of Turidu Zinat al Hayat al Dunya, desiring the attractions of this world, Shaitan makes that person blind. And the first blindness is through the glamour and temptation of this world. The first, or, or you know, to continue with the beauty and the desires of this world. If right now, especially again, I keep on saying youth, but everybody is included. Right now, if we ask, what is my most desired thing of this world? Starting with myself. What is the one thing, one thing right now, what is the one thing I want to gain or attain before I die? What first thing comes into your mind? If it is something regarding this dunya, then that's it. We are in that trap. But if it is something else, then Alhamdulillah, still there is a hope. Sikhwan Muslimin, it is very important that we take some time out of our life. And I am addressing especially those people, Alhamdulillah, who are still in their youth. And second, those people who are sick and still spending their life and they have reached to that certain age where everybody knows that now how long you have, God knows. Both of these categories. Wallahi, well, think. Think that how much time do I devote for the deen of Allah? Not going around helping people. This is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about for the sake of of the deen of Allah for the religion Islam and when we would know that when we will realize that how important or what is the value of this world 
our perspective of living will change. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hadid, chapter 57, verse number 20. Know that the life of this world is but amusement and diversion. And adornment and boasting to one another. And competition in increase of wealth and children. I'll summarize. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, that when this dunya becomes the preference, then remember that you will be running. We, you know, see, I, I don't mean to disrespect any animal, but I believe donkey is one of the most hardworking animal on this planet. Most hardworking animal is donkey. Well, one of the most hard animals. Then we will be running in this world like a donkey, working very hard. But in actual, what we are doing is, that we are in a competition that I have more houses, more valuable assets than you. And the second competition will be my son or daughter is in this university. My son or daughter has become this and this and this. Well, I right now, especially those people whose children are there in school, colleges or universities think is this not what we are talking to each other about I'm not saying this is wrong I'm not saying this is wrong but what I'm saying it is this not the preference which has become in our life that instead of thinking that how my son or daughter can be can become a sadaqah jariya for me I think or my preference is, is my preference is to make them doctor or engineer so they can earn more than me I'm not saying this is wrong. But what I'm saying is that this has become the only preference. This is wrong. Everybody wants their children to excel in life. Alhamdulillah. Make sure you do that. Make sure you give it a best shot. But Ikhwan Muslimin, if in this process, I lose my child as a Muslim, I've lost everything. If in this process, my child becomes more of liberal or anti-Islam. I lost everything. If after my death, well, I think it, think it in this way. I mean, this is one of the very important things. If after my death, my child don't know how to wash my body as a father, as a son, and I'm his father, well, I lost everything. If after my death, my son cannot stand and lead my janaza prayer. I've lost everything. Is this our preference? And with all the other things, is this how we think? Well, if not, then to read the zinat al Then we are in a race of the zina, of the pride, of the desires of this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the kasurun fil amwali wal awlaad that the competition in increase of wealth and children, what is it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Munafiqun, chapter number 63, verse number 9, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu. O those who have believed, or O believers, la tulhikum amwalukum wa la awlaadukum an dhikrillah. Do not let your wealth or your children distract you from remembering Allah. <coughs> and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكْ And those who do so, فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ خَسَارَ خَاسِرُونَ Those are the ones who are the losers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this race, of wealth and getting your children on the higher statuses places if in this race that's the only race you have that's the only competition that's the only preferences you have in life that's it that person has become a loser look at it from this way how many of us knows 
the name of the father of her grandfather. Not grandfather. Father of her grandfather. How many of us knows the name of the mother of our grandfather? She is also a woman, right? She must have also lived her life. She must be doing the same things to get into paradise. How many of us remember that? Well, I don't. I'll be honest. I don't. So what matters in this dunya? Giving all my energy and efforts or putting all my energy and efforts in that child who's two or third, who's second or third generation wouldn't even remember me is more important or should I think about <clears throat> or should I think about that place where I might be resting tonight probably two miles from here called a cemetery or graveyard should that be my importance or should that be my preference Ikhwan Muslimin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ankabood 69, chapter number 69, verse number, uh, chapter number 29, verse number 64, وَإِنَّا دَارِ الْآخِرَةَ لَحِيَ الْحَيْوَانِ And the true or the real life is, is the hereafter. The actual success, فَمَنْ زُحْزِهَا عَنِ النَّارِ Whoever is removed away from fire, وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ and is admitted to the paradise Faqad Faz He indeed is a successful Do we put this standard of success in the minds of our children and in ourselves? If we don't have that mindset our children will never have it We cannot expect miracles to happen in our children's life if we do not put enough efforts for them to have this standard. Because our child, he lives with us, he looks at us, we are his role model, either he like it or not. We, he looks at us that how we solve the problems of our life. He looks at us that how I deal with my wife, with my children, with my neighbors, with my friends, when I'm in the masjid, how I am behaving. And this is what he's learning unconsciously. Without knowing, this is what is learning. How can I expect a miracle to happen when I'm not giving a chance for that miracle to happen? Yaqwan Muslimin, what is the value of this life in the sight of the Prophet? In the narration of Muslim, I will shorten it, I'll summarize it. Umar, he went to see Prophet. And Prophet was lying on a mat. He was not wearing a shirt. So when Prophet got up from the mat, there were some marks on his body from the mat. Which means that there was nothing between mat and his body. He was just lying on the mat like this. And Umar reports or says that what I saw was a cupboard with a handful of barley and then some mimosa leaves in the corner and a leather bag hanging to the side. That's it. That's it. This is what Prophet had. And when Amr who saw this, started crying, weeping. What did Rasulullah say? He said, Amr, or Ya Ibn Khattab, son of Khattab, what makes you cry? Umar says, Prophet Caesar and Khusru, Kisra, as we say, they have all the treasures, all the pleasures of this world, and they are not on the right path. And you being the Prophet, Rasulullah, this is what you are going through. Yani, this is how you are living. No eating, no blessings, no fruits, no nothing. Is this what your life is? What Prophet Sallallahu said? He said, O son of Khattab, you have no Khattab. Are you not pleased that they are, in these blessings what you are saying, that they are for us in the hereafter and for them in this world? What does it mean that these blessings, what you are talking, Ya Umar, ya Umar bin Khattab, for us these blessings we will have it in hereafter. 
And for those people, for them, it is in this world. Umar ibn Khattab said, of course. Yekhwan Muslim mean, how long is this life? 100 years at the most. And wallahi, when somebody reaches, any, forget about 100, when somebody reaches at the age of 60, 65, and they're not taking care of themselves, they cannot even walk. Diabetes, blood pressure, and you know, what all other uh, diseases the person goes through. You know, sometimes you cannot sleep. Sometimes you cannot eat, you have trouble eating, gas, kidneys, and, and all those things. And by the age of 70, you have to be extremely lucky, extremely lucky not to be having any problem in your body. And you're extremely lucky. I was just talking to one of my cousins, not, not really cousins, son of, you know, he's probably 30s, not even late, early 30s. And he will have a bypass in a few days. Bypass, open chest. 30s only. This is what life is. This life. How about hereafter? Never ending. Never ending. What is the comparison? Even if somebody lives here for 100,000 million years, whatever number you can think of, compared to infinity, it is nothing. Whatever blessings you want, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give it to you. Whatever you want, whatever number you have, whatever you can think of, let's say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give it to you. Wallahi, what is the pleasure out of it when you know that one day I'm going to leave it everything. I'm going to leave everything here in this world. And I'm going to go. So what we should do? Should we renounce this world? Should we just abandon everything and just go and start living in the mountains and the caves? Of course not. There is no monasticism that is abandoning this world or there is no celibacy that is abstaining from the relationships in Islam. Yekhwan Muslimin, we have to live in this world. We have to become doctor. We have to become engineer, we have to become a businessman, we have to become architect, still being loyal towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani Uthman bin Affan, third caliph, was he not rich? Of course he was. Abdurrahman bin Auf, was he not rich? Of course he was. But they are the people among those who Prophet said in their life, you're going to go to Jannah. What was those qualities they had that Prophet of Allah told them that you are going to Jannah in this world they are being told. So Ikhwan Muslimin, whatever Allah has given us. See this becomes, this brings us to the basic concept of deen. Allah right now, if we think or if somebody will ask you what is Islam, what we answer are the five pillars, right? And what we forget that we are telling them five pillars, not the building. Building and pillars are different things. So right now, if somebody would ask you, what is Islam? The only answer we know are the five pillars. Whereas, as I've said, you know, those are pillars, those are foundations. Building is something else. Why don't we learn? Why don't we give the preference to these things? Because once... We come into this understanding that five pillars and that's it, everything changes. But on the other side, when we take Islam as guidelines to live our life, now everything will change. Now my goal will not be to become the best doctor in the world. I keep on saying doctor because this is famous back home. So please, you know, no, no disrespect to doctors. So now my goal will not be to become the best doctor in the world only. But my goal would be to become a doctor or engineer or athlete or architect or whatever you can think of and to serve the humanity to, to get the highest place in Jannah. If I am doing my work, whatever work in this dunya I have, responsibilities I have, if I am performing those responsibilities, Keeping in mind that through this, I want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ikhwan al-Muslimin, inshallah, faqad faaz. 
you will be in that category. This is what is important. We should not think that what Islam has given us is not enough. This is another trap of shaitan. Don't think that what Prophet told was good for 1400 years and not today. See, this is somewhere at the back of the mind. This is what we think. That's why we don't learn deen. That is why, you know, see, at one point, I like, it's just a comparison that at one place, a person spent 16 or 18 years of his life to study deen and he becomes a mufti. Then I'm, on the other side, a person who has never learned deen, learn I'm saying, not, not information, who has never learned deen, he said, I know everything what you know. Wallahi, what a disrespect. What a disrespect. Yani you spend 20 years doing business. I come and say, I know business as you do. Maybe you will sue me, you know. But when it comes to deen, nobody cares. And what is the source of your information? YouTube. I saw it on YouTube. This has become the importance of the deen in this perspective I'm talking. This is what we have, this is what we think of deen. Well, I like this, this bottle of water. You can just get it from anywhere. Just throw it in the, you know, rubbish later on. This is what is the value of deen in our life, in our sight. And compared to, in comparison to a mufti, oh, I know what he knows. Well, so what if he spent 16, 18 years learning? And for why on the other side, that mufti has spent 18 years, he would still think, oh, I think I should learn more. Because I don't think I know enough. When this becomes the thought process, when this becomes the thinking, now you are not learning deen anymore. Because the windows and doors and everything is closed in our mind. And that's it. And this is what shaitan wants. When this happens, then of course, we are not looking for any more religious gatherings. We are not looking for any more sources of gaining information. Or we are not looking for any more learning deen. Now I know everything. So I want to gain this dunya. So, you have to mean, so encourage your children to become whatever is their passion. They want to become doctor. They want to become engineer. Whatever they want to become. But at the same time, well, the time is up, but this is important. I would like to suggest a program. Take some time out of your children's life. Six months, eight months, minimum. And make sure they learn only deen in the six to eight months. Only deen, nothing else. They should learn Arabic, the language of our deen, the language of our prophet. They should learn the translation of the Quran, portions maybe. That is the source of guidance. They should read at least one book of the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad They should learn what are the usul of the fiqh. They should learn what is the science of the hadith. They should learn the basic fiqh. That what is the difference between tahir, pure water, and what is the difference. Or, or I'll, I'll make it easy. I mean, let's not go into that. Can I do wudu with Pepsi? Pepsi is tahir, right? It's pure. I drink. Can I do wudu with Pepsi? Well, if your child can answer that, alhamdulillah. If not, then probably we need to put some more effort. Yaqal Muslimin, again, I'll repeat. Take out nine months, make it standard. Nine months, send them to a religious school. Let them learn these basics. And wallahi, whatever they will become in their life, they would know still what is their priority in life. And with all the respect, this is an important point I have to highlight, with all the respect, making them hafiz is not enough. Because they know the Quran by heart. They have mugged up the Quran, but they don't know nothing. What does it mean? Making them hafiz is not enough. I'm not saying not important. I'm saying not enough if they don't know what they're memorizing, if they don't know what they're reading. So, uh, the time is up. So, whatever I've said, Yaqwan Muslimin, of course, these are reminders and not fatwas. So, please, look into your life. Take every day as an opportunity. Every breath as an opportunity. Sometimes you may have life, but you may not have mind. So, take everything as an opportunity to learn deen, to, return, to, to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So whatever is good, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if there's a mistake, that is because of my weakness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me.